Hi friends and welcome to the channel. Today we'll see how to create a Mac EC2 instance on AWS. This is a great way to get up and running quickly with a Mac OS environment, but there are a couple gotchas that you might run into along the way, including cost and quotas. So I'll call those out as we go. But let's get started here in the console. We're going to start just naively here in the console by going to EC2 and launching a new instance. If you're new to this whole EC2 thing, check out another one of my videos linked above to learn the basics. But here you'll see that we've got some options for the macOS machines. We'll just go with Big Sur, select this. The only instance type you'll note up here is mac1.metal, so we'll go with that and configure instance details. And then as you're going along here, checking your different settings, you'll come across this note down here that this particular instance type must be launched onto a dedicated host. And you can either allocate a new host from here, or you can always get there from, just open up a new tab here. You can always just go to EC2. And then over here on the left, dedicated hosts, you can create one this way as well. But before we do any of that, let's go over a couple of very important points first. If you aren't familiar with this idea of a dedicated host, this is a physical or bare metal server. This is required because the Mac EC2 instance will be running on actual Mac minis and not on a virtual machine. And it's also dedicated just to you, hence the name, meaning that you're not sharing it with any other AWS customers. But all of this obviously comes at a cost. If you go out to the pricing for dedicated hosts, right here, there are some ways that you can save money with reserved instances and savings plans, but I'm assuming most of you are gonna be using the on-demand pricing like I am. This is the most expensive, but it's the easiest to use just for testing and trying things out. So let me click on on-demand pricing here. And that'll take us down to this part of the page. And here you'll see Mac one price per hour in US dollars is $1 and about eight cents. And also very important to call out this note here that the Mac one dedicated hosts have a minimum host allocation and billing duration of 24 hours. You actually can't release that host until that 24 hours is up. So bottom line, this is gonna cost you about $25 just to spin up a new Mac instance. So don't try this at home unless you're okay with that cost. I actually created one yesterday to prep for this video. So I've already committed to that $25. In return, think about hitting that like button and also consider subscribing for other content like this. But let me go back and show you how to set that up if you don't already have one. Back to this other tab here. You'll see there's my dedicated host. Presumably you don't have one though, so you wanna say allocate dedicated host. I won't go all the way through with setting up this one, but you can give it a name. Choose whatever you like there. So we'll say my Mac dedicated host. For instance, family, make sure you choose Mac one. Instance type, you're only gonna have the one option, Mac1.metal. You can choose whatever availability zone you want. I'm in US East one right now, so I'll just choose one of these. You can leave everything else the same and quantity, probably just want one. Now here's where another potential gotcha comes in. You filled out all the details here, you go to create this host, you say allocate, and then you get some kind of a message about dedicated hosts are not available or you've hit a quota, something along those lines. By default, at least for my account, my quota for dedicated hosts was set to zero. And I got an error when I tried to do this the first time. If you're getting that error, let me show you how to fix it. I'll open up a new tab here in the console. And you can just type in quotas, go to service quotas. Then you wanna click on EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. There's lots of different quotas for this service. So type in dedicated Mac. Here you'll see the default quota value is zero. My quota value is one, I had to get that increased. If you click into here, you'll see I made that request back on December 31st. And that's how I fix the issue. So if yours is also at zero, you want to request quota increase here. It'll fill in the details for you here. You want to change your quota value to one, most likely. Just something greater than your current one, which is probably zero, and then hit request. Once you make that request, you'll get an email confirmation, and then somebody on the AWS side will evaluate the request and adjust your quota. This took about three or four days for me, but I'm on the basic free support plan, so requests can sometimes take longer. If you're on a plan like business or enterprise, you'll probably get a faster response. 
But once you get that confirmation and your quota has been increased, you'll be able to come back and finish setting up this dedicated host back here. All right, like I said, I already have one set up. So once you have that set up as well, then we can come back and finish creating our EC2 instance that we started in the first place. So back to this page, you'll select the host that you created. I've got mine right here. You can leave everything else the same. We'll go to add storage. I'll go with the defaults there. I'll skip tags, but we do need to make some changes on the security group. Security group, of course, is the firewall that controls inbound and outbound traffic to this instance. Once we create this instance, we're going to connect to it using the VNC protocol. I've got a client tool called VNC Viewer, so we can log in and see the GUI. But to do that, I need to open up a custom rule here. This is going to be port 5900 for VNC. And I'll say that source is going to be my IP address, which will fill in automatically here. And then we also need to SSH into the machine. We're going to change the password for our default user. So we'll add another rule for SSH. It'll fill in port 22 automatically. And here again, I'll just say source is my IP address. All right, looking good. Let's review and launch. Launch. You will need to either create a key pair or select an existing one. This is how you're going to connect to your instance. I've already got one here for Mac. I'll acknowledge that I have access to that. If you don't have one, though, you can create a new pair here. Really easy to do. And then launch instances. All right, you can view instances, see the progress of this. You want to keep an eye on the status check here. So it'll take a couple minutes to come up, so I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, everything is up and running now. I've got status check two of two passed. So we're looking good. The next thing we need to do is SSH into this and change the password for the default user, which is EC2 user. There's different ways you can SSH in. Let me just select this. If you go to connect and then come over to SSH client, you'll get handy instructions here and some nice copy paste that you can use. So you want to open up an SSH client. I'm running on Windows here locally, so I'm going to be using PowerShell. But there's lots of other clients out there, so use whatever one you prefer. I'll bring up PowerShell. Regardless of what client you're using, you need to make sure you have that private key that we saw when we launched the instance. So mine was called maccpair.pem, and mine is located here in this directory, C, users, Amber. If I do an LS, you'll see it's right there. So whatever you're using, navigate to that directory where your key pair is, or you'll need to type in the path to it. And then over here on the left, you'll see that you need to connect to your instance, and it gives you an example that you can use, which is really handy. So I'm actually going to copy this to my clipboard. I'll paste it over here. So we're basically saying we want to SSH. This is the key that we're using, and then the address to that Mac instance that we just set up. I'll hit Enter. Now, the first time you connect to this host, you'll probably get a message like this, saying that the authenticity of the host can't be established. And this just means, hey, we see that you're connecting to this host for the first time. Are you sure that you trust it? So we'll say yes. And then subsequent times when I connect, I'm not going to get that message. You might also get a message here saying that your private key is publicly available or that your private key is too open, something like that. If that happens, then you'll want to grab this chmod command right here and enter that. This stands for change mode, and it's basically just going to lock down permissions on that private key so that you can then SSH in and you should be good. I don't get that prompt in PowerShell, but if you do, that's how to fix it. So in addition to updating the password, I also need to start VNC on the instance. That's what's going to allow us to connect to it and get that graphical user interface that I mentioned. I've got some code on my clipboard. I'll include this down below in the description if you want to copy paste. So we'll enter this first line here. And then the second line will actually launch that. All right, and then finally, let's update that password that I keep mentioning. sudo passwd, and then the default username for an EC2 instance is EC2 hyphen user. I'll enter the password. This can be whatever you want. Just remember what it is. And then confirm. All right, now we can actually go connect. I'm going to be using a client called VNC Viewer. Let me open that up. 
There are lots of other clients available that work with the VNC protocol for different operating systems. Most are free and easy to set up, but this is what I'm using on my local Windows machine. So I'll create a new connection out to the Mac instance. You can do that just by right-clicking and saying New Connection or coming up to File and New Connection. We're going to need the IP address or host name. So if you come back in here to your instance, grab this public IPv4 address right here. I'll just copy that to my clipboard, paste that in here. Then you can enter a human-friendly name. I'll just say Mac EC2 instance. You can leave the defaults for everything else, say OK, and then connect. I'm just right-clicking there, connect. For what I'm doing, I'm OK with this, the insecure connection. And then it's going to prompt us for the credentials. So EC2 user, again, is the default user for this instance, and then that password that I entered. We'll click OK. You'll need to enter the password again here. Enter. And there you go, a full-on Mac machine that you can use to do app development or testing or whatever it is that you need to do. Now, if you're following along, very, very important that you shut things down or you could end up with a huge bill. So I'll close out of this, close out of VNC Viewer. Back here in your instance, you'll want to terminate this instance. Say terminate. But where the real cost comes in, again, is your dedicated host. So over here on the left, come into Dedicated Hosts. Now, I mentioned that you're not able to release this prior to the 24-hour minimum. So chances are you're not going to be able to release this just yet. I actually can't release mine either because it hasn't been 24 hours since I created it yesterday. But what you'll want to do is come up to Actions, Release Host. Actually, the first time you'll be denied because there's running instances we did just shut that one down, but it takes a minute to terminate. So you'll see that it's shutting down here. Let me just wait for that to happen, and then I'll show you what happens when you try to release your dedicated host. I'll give it a minute and be right back. All right, that instance is finally terminated. So now back to our dedicated host, our physical host that we're working with here. As I was mentioning before, even though we no longer have instances running on it, you'll see that if you try to release the host prior to that 24 hours, you'll get this error saying that you can't do it because there is that minimum of 24 hours. So if you're following along, please, please, please set yourself a reminder to go release this, shut it down. Otherwise, you're going to be paying about $25 a day, which adds up quickly. So that's it. That's how to create an EC2 Mac instance on AWS. If you found this helpful, check out the other videos in my AWS playlist. And thanks so much for watching.